Are you a fan of old metal lunchboxes? Well, you're in luck. We're going to go inside the world-famous Lunchbox Museum right now. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? No gates, no punts. Not a lot if you're a grown-up. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown-Up. I'm John. I am a Gen X Grown-Up. Thank you for checking out this video and the channel. I am standing right outside of the world-famous Lunchbox Museum in Columbus, Georgia. Now, not very long ago, we did a podcast about lunchboxes, our memories of them. I'll put a link to that podcast up there in the corner. But when we were doing research, we realized there was a lunchbox museum, and it was just up here in Columbus, Georgia, just a few hours away from us in North Florida. I couldn't resist making the time to come up here and check out the lunchbox museum. We're going to go inside. Before we do, if this is your first time watching Gen X Grown Up, see the little bar that lifts, has that subscribe button in the corner, give it a click. You can check out way more cool Gen X inspired stuff. All right. Let's go inside. The museum is located inside of River Market Antiques on Hamilton Road in Columbus. I visited on a beautiful sunny September afternoon, and while the antique store has more than its fair share of treasures, I made a beeline for the red curtained entrance of the Lunchbox Museum. Stepping through that curtain was like stepping back in time. Dime store box fans hummed in the corners, struggling to keep the aisles cool. The stark whitewashed brick walls were packed with as many shelves as they could possibly muster. And those shelves were absolutely brimming with row upon row of little time capsules from the age of pop culture themed lunchboxes. For every one that sparked a memory, there were another dozen I was seeing for the first time. Impressive, astounding, awe-inspiring, there just aren't enough superlatives to properly convey the feeling of nostalgia that washed over me as I was shooting footage for this video. But what about the man behind this aggregation of metal mementos? I sat down with the owner, founder, and curator himself, Mr. Alan Woodall, and asked him how he got started collecting metal lunchboxes. In the 80s, uh, I was at an antique show in Atlanta, and one of the vendors had three lunch boxes on the table. It immediately just, I said, it's like a time capsule, the Green Hornet, Batman and Robin. Picked them up and looked at them and I said, hey, this is great pop art. Wonderful, beautiful art here. So I ended up buying all three of the lunch boxes because they brought, brought back great memories. Then I started wondering, well, I wonder what else is out there in lunch, in lunch boxes and I made it a uh, goal to find out how many different lunch boxes were really out there. I started doing research. In 1990, the man up in St. Louis, Missouri, his name was Dr. Robert Carr. He had a nice collection of lunch boxes and he put out a little monthly publication about the history of lunch boxes. And I heard a year or so later that uh, he had passed away. He had a collection of about 600 lunch boxes and thermoses. And, and I love the collection. I told Ms. Carr, I said, Ms. Carr, I might not be able to compete with New York and California on the money on this collection, but I'll do something that they probably won't do. And she said, what's that? I said, well, I will write a book on lunch boxes, a, a price guide and a history of lunch boxes and I will feature your husband and the Carr family in the dedication of the book. So she thought about it. Long story short, she ended up selling me the collection. We loaded up that collection and I drove it to Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> I did write a book, the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Metal Lunch Boxes, with a co-author, a guy named Sean Breckle from Virginia. And the dedication was to, the, to Bob Carr and his family. So we're real proud of that. Six, seven, eight, ten months later, I get a call from a guy named David Shape from the Smithsonian in Washington. They would like to add to the collection that they had at the Smithsonian, and could I help them? So we get the Smithsonian to come into Columbus, Georgia, to look at <laughs> to look at lunch boxes, and it worked out just great. Uh, the newspaper, local newspaper, the Columbus Ledger and Cloud, gave us great coverage. TV stations were here. I remember David Shape made a statement to in a news conference. 
that it's not often that the Smithsonian actually purchases items for the, for the Smithsonian, but these were so rare and so important to the museum, they were actually making a purchase of lunch boxes and thermoses. And I did make a donation, of course, along with that to the Smithsonian. A year or two later, they actually did a tour of the United States featuring part of their lunchbox collection from the museum at the Smithsonian. And it traveled all over the country. And that was great publicity for, again, for the hobby that, we, that we're in. Oh, they're great time capsules, and we really uh, enjoy when people come to the museum here. When they come into the museum, a lot of, in many cases, they can't, they don't remember the box that they had, and they had one, but they couldn't remember it. But as they walk down in the collection into the museum, of all the rows, all of a sudden, I can see somebody, their face lights up, that's my box, that's, that's what I had. And it's really a reward to see the, the smile come on the face of the people that really, where this brings back the memories. I asked Alan if he had an idea of just how vast his museum collection was, just how many pieces. Well, in the, in the whole collection, we think we have a little, probably over 2,000 pieces. And that would be, of course, lunch boxes and thermoses and TV trays and waste baskets. And, Anything that, uh, that had a superheroes or one of the characters printed on it, we would bring it and try to bring it into the museum. So we have foreign boxes, some of the top collectible foreign boxes in the world. Then we have, of course, the, the early, early, early lunch boxes from the 20s and on up. And then we have what we would call the, some of the more rare boxes, the collectible boxes, like the 1935 Mickey Mouse. I consider that like probably the Holy Grail. You know, that's one of the rarest. But Toppy, Toppy the Elephant, uh, top value stamps, they gave that box away. That's one of the, one of the rarest of all the metal lunch boxes that are being collected today. Yeah, we're right at 30 years. Any plans on closing anytime soon? No. <laughs> no. Hopefully, uh, I'm 85 years old. I was 85 in July and really love it. But hopefully, you know, the family will keep the Lunchbox Museum going. Or they might be a nice, some collector or some outfit somewhere that would like to put it in another location. It might even draw more traffic than where we are here in Columbus, Georgia. But, uh, our options, so we're just kind of open on that, but I'm, I am getting on up there. Woodall shared with me that he's had visitors from all over the world come to see his lunchbox collection. I asked him how he feels to see so many people enjoying his labor of love. Oh, what a reward. It's just a really, a really great feeling to see people come in and get that smile on their face when they see the boxes that they might have had that they had when they were back in school. Brings back the memories, time capsules. We really uh, appreciate the support for the people that come here and hopefully they like what they see and they'll tell their friends about it. It's just fantastic to have all these together and I really thank you for having this museum and curating it and for giving us time to come in and sit down and talk with you. Well, thank you, thank you so much. I think you've got to agree that's a pretty amazing cross-section of Gen X era nostalgia. Just walking through that place, just every box I saw was like, wow, wow. And there was one that I just absolutely could not leave without, my $6 million man and his thermos. <laughs> I hope you found something in this video to enjoy. How could you not? And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Gen X Grown Up is dedicated to bringing you new Generation X inspired videos every week. Here are a couple more you can watch right now, but for even more, subscribe and enable those notifications. And if you love what we do, we invite you to support us over on Patreon. And of course, your feedback in the comments and a quick thumbs up are always appreciated.